All right, hey guys, back. Welcome back to another video. Um, some of you have requested a ricing tutorial, so that's what I'm going to be doing. This will be part zero. Uh, the reasoning is because this is just like the setup. This is getting the i3 window manager working up and running, getting some sort of basic setup that you can use, but that doesn't necessarily look nice. So here I am in a virtual machine. I got everything set up, and I got the i3 window manager installed, so now I'm just going to press enter. Now, the first time you log in, you'll get this prompt, and you just want to press enter. And now, you want to choose, do you want your mod key to be the, the super key or the alt key? Personally, the super key is a better choice for me because alt key can have conflicts, so I'm just going to up arrow until this little arrow right here is pointing at win, short for Windows key, and I'm just going to press enter. Um, and once you do that, uh, you are presented with a blank screen, so now just press enter. And... You want to make sure you have Xterm installed so you can get something up and running. And it's going to look hideous, obviously, but um, save your guys' eyes. I'm just going to run this command. So I, I have the Alacrity Terminal emulator installed, so I'm going to run Alacrity and symbol disown um, semicolon and then exit. And that will open an alacrity window. So now I'm going to cd into my .config directory slash i3. And you'll see that if you list the contents of this directory, there's a config file. So you want to vim into that config or use any, any text editor you want to use will work. So for example, I also installed Notepad QQ uh, for an example. So here's Notepad QQ. Of course, because I have no way of configuring the QT settings yet, I'm not going to be using it because it looks hideous right now. And also, Vim has built in highlighting for the i3 config. So I'm going to, uh, I believe, for I believe by default, the default setting for closing a window in i3 is mod C. Or no, mod shift C. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. Uh, what if I just do X kill? Yeah, that works. Uh, so, I'm going to vim the config. Now, you'll see this set mod mod for. This is how variables are set in the i3 config. And it's... It's, um, so you put the set keyword and then dollar symbol mod and then mod4. Mod4 is your super key. Mod1 would be the alt key. And then this is your font. Now, I actually, um, don't want to use Pango Monospace. I want to use JetBrains Mono Nerd Font for extra customizability. So I'm gonna open the web browser I have installed, which is Brave. So I'm going to do the same thing I did for Alacrity. And I'm going to let it open. And now I'm going to go to nerdfonts.com. I'm going to go to downloads. And in the downloads, I'm going to try and find... I'm going to try and find nerd fonts, uh, JetBrains mono nerd fonts. So, also, sorry if you hear my brother in the background. I'm not at my dad's house, so I have to share a tiny house with him. But, uh, anywho, why can't I find the nerd fonts for JetBrains mono? JetBrains Mono. 
Where are they? This is one of the things I don't like about nerdfonts.com, is you kind of have to search a little. And it can get a little frustrating sometimes. Ah, here it is. So now I'm just going to click download. And I'm actually... I'm actually going to open a new terminal window. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to do... Uh, mkdir dot fonts in my home directory and I'm gonna put the JetBrains mono nerd font package in here so I'm gonna make sure that hidden files are enabled and I'm just gonna click on dot fonts and I'm gonna save this file in there then wait for it to download Also, I'm in a rickety chair, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Again, uh, my ideal recording space is at my dad's house, because that's kind of where all my equipment is, but... You know what? Classic headphones on a System76 laptop is way better than classic headphones on my little laptop, that's for sure. So, alright. Now I need to cd into dot fonts. Can I make this bigger? I know this is X term, but eh. looks like yeah. The first thing we'll want to do is definitely change out the default terminal that opens up. So I'm gonna open Alacrity like this, uh, and then I'm gonna cd into dot fonts. unzip and it's gonna unzip it and just for simplicity I'm gonna remove I'm gonna RM the JetBrains mono uh, zip file I'm gonna remove OFL.txt and I'm also gonna remove readme.md so now that the fonts are in, uh, you can, you should just be able to change them right here. So JetBrains Mono Nerd Font, just like that. And after that, I don't remember the keybind to start to to restart the i3 config. Let me look. And actually. Yeah, while we're at it, this is where you would change the terminal that opens up. So I'm going to just set that to alacrity, or actually even better, I'm going to make a variable just called terminal. Uh, so I'm going to go up here, and I guess I'll make a new, a new section called settings, and I'll set terminal to alacrity or whatever terminal emulator you want so now I go down and I find where does what if I just search i3 so okay um Mod shift R. Mod shift R by default is how you restart the config. So now if I press mod enter, that did not work. <laughs> so um mod shift C. Yeah, there we go. No. Wait, what am I saying? No. Yeah, okay, I am having a little bit of issues here. Uh I know it's one of these keybinds because, like, I haven't used i3 in a while, but I do know it's one of these. Right now, my current window manager is awesome window manager, and on my System76 laptop, which I'm on right now, I'm actually using KDE Plasma, so, yeah. This is weird. Uh, let's see. Oh, I never wrote the file, that's why. Yeah, so now when I press enter after um, 
hitting mod shift R, it opens up alacrity instead of that ugly X term window. And okay, so all right, so we got basic stuff in the config. Now, you probably don't want to launch programs with um, with the terminal, so let's set another setting variable here, and let's say launcher. And I'm going to set it to Rofi. You could set it to D menu, which I know is another popular one, but honestly, just replace D menu with Rofi. It's got all the features D menu has, plus a whole bunch more that are definitely very useful. So uh, let's make a new section here called launch the launcher. And I'm going to bind. So the way you set keybinds is with bind sim. I'm going to bind sim uh, dollar sign mod plus um, space, let's say. And it's going to exec launcher. Actually, mod plus, yeah, mod plus space. Or whatever keybind you want. Just make sure it doesn't conflict with an internal i3 keybind that's already here by default. I'm also going to, where it says mod shift Q to kill a window, I'm going to set it to mod Q. Uh, because then, like, that's just more standard, I guess. Another standard one is mod shift C, but that's to reload the config here in i3. So, um, so I don't actually have Rofi installed. So open up your package manager and install Rofi. So for me on Arch, it's going to be sudo pacman s Rofi. And also, I am so sorry for not mentioning this earlier, but if you want to install i3 on if you want to install i3, you don't actually have to install i3 gaps. You can just install regular i3. So on arch, uh, sudo pacman s i3 wm. And the reason I mentioned i3 gaps is i3 gaps is a fork of i3 that adds gaps, but i3 gaps actually got merged into base i3, so you don't need i3 gaps anymore. So thought I'd mention that. But now Rofi is installed, so I'm going to reload the config with mod shift R, and I get an error. So I can click here to show the error, and it opens up X term. but anywho. So the error is duplicate keybinds. So let me do a vim search mod plus space, because I have a feeling, yeah. So we don't actually need this keybind, because we can just use the vim motion keys but okay so I removed that duplicate keybind which was basically just toggling which window is focused on and now it works so if I press mod space it opens Rofi and this is a brain fart on my end I I just said to launch Rofi but what you actually want to do is launch Rofi with the show mode of drun which basically just opens up a list of all the apps you have installed on the system with desktop files dot desktop so I believe all I need to do is dash show d run so rofi dash show d run here in the launcher variable and now if I reload the configuration with mod shift r and press space. Yeah, so now I have a list of my actual applications. So now you may want a bar. Uh, so let's go down to the very, very bottom of the i3 config. And here, so i3 has its own bar by default, but you might not want it. So I believe you can just replace this with whatever bar you want. So i3 status command polybar and then install polybar like this. 
So use whatever package manager you want to use, polybar, sudo pacman s polybar on arch. And once you have that, you should just be able to reload after you write the file. And okay, it opened up polybar, but uh, I still have this at the bottom. Okay. Let's see, where could it possibly be? Where could it possibly be setting that bottom part? Having a little bit of trouble finding out where it could possibly. Huh. Okay, so we can remove these. I already can see that. So, since we're using polybar, we don't need these. So, this is basically, in these volume sections with the volume keys, this is basically uh, doing stuff with the volume and then refreshing i3 status. But we actually don't need to do that because we are going to be using polybar. So, let's see, where... I'm trying, I'm struggling to see where it's doing that. We can actually, oh, this is all D menu stuff, so we can actually remove this too. Debloat the config. All right, let's see. Um... Where is it? All right, let me write the file and reload the config and see what happens. Okay, there's still a bar. So, um, what if what if I literally just remove that? Bit of experimentation going on here. All right. I'm actually going to see what I did in my last rice with i3, because I remember what I did in my last rice. I actually, um, it was actually successful. So let me just check my personal i3 rice configuration. So, config. Right, so I'm going to copy this in, and basically what this is, is i3 bar underscore command nothing. So now if I reload the config, yeah, now there's no bar whatsoever. So now here at the bottom, I'm going to create a new section called auto starts, and I'm going to basically always I'm gonna point this to the i3 configuration and I'm gonna say auto start so we're gonna create a shell script called auto start and it's gonna end in dot sh so now we want to vim auto start dot sh and I'm going to put some stuff in here that should just be in here by default. So LX session should be in here. And uh, nitrogen dash dash restore. So what I put in here are two standard things that are often in an auto start file. So let's install these two programs. So... I'm just going to run sudo pacman s nitrogen and lx session. Basically, nitrogen is the wallpaper setter, and lx session is the session pull kit, so you can actually run apps as root without opening a terminal, which are two very important things. So I'm going to chmod auto start. And now, 
Now, if we restart the config, you'll see nothing pops up. So let's get some wallpapers. And that's just an Endeavor OS thing that popped up. No, I don't want to see these welcome pop ups. These are annoying. Because I am actually using Endeavor OS instead of Arch. Don't ask me why. I just had the ISO laying around, so I used it. But, anywho. So, I have a repository on my Codeberg that I'll go ahead and put the uh, link to. So, what you want to... So, it will be in the description. You just have to copy this link. So, git clone. And then the link in the description. And it will be for my wallpapers. And I'll just type it out right now. But you just want to clo clone these if you want some wallpapers off the bat. I'm going to clone these as a folder called wallpapers. So I'm just going to wait for them to clone. And I'll see you once they're cloned. Alright, the wallpapers have finished cloning. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to press mod 2 to go to the second workspace and I'm going to launch Rofi with mod space like what I set and I'm going to select nitrogen as my application. Now I'm going to go down here to preferences and click add. And I'm going to add that directory I just cloned full of wallpapers. And I'm going to make sure recurse is checked since I have some folders, some subfolders within this folder. And it's going to add all my wallpapers for me. Now, now I'm going to uh, make this float. So to make, make this float and by default on i3, you just press mod shift space on the focused window and whenever you see this happen that's because I'm pressing mod alone and KDE is putting a menu over VirtualBox but uh, I'm also gonna so I'm gonna left click to move this and right click to resize this and now I'm gonna choose a wallpaper so in this initial setup guide I'm just gonna choose a random wallpaper but in the next tutorial when we choose like color schemes and making it look nice I'll actually put some more care into this so let's just choose uh, let's see uh, how about this wallpaper for now oh yeah you also want to go down here to where it says automatic to zoomed fill. This will make the wallpaper actually look normal. Yeah, so now since I changed the kill command from mod shift Q, now I can just press mod Q to close nitrogen and go back to the first workspace. And I'm actually going to go back to the second workspace and open up Brave. Because uh, I actually have some stuff in my config that isn't in the default config config and since I haven't used i3 in ages well ages is in I've been using BSPWM and awesome WM for quite a bit now so I'm gonna go to my i3 config and I'm gonna go down to alright uh, let me Right. So, I'm going to copy these settings over that I set. And I'm going to go back into... I'm going to go back into my i3 config. Let me blow up this terminal. Uh, and I'm going to go into here. And go down up to where I defined all my settings. And I'm going to paste these things that I copied. Basically what these variables are, are the inner gap size and the outer gap size. All you have to know is 
The inner gap size is like the gaps between the windows, and the outer gap size is just the additional amount of pixels to put uh, between the window and the edge of the screen. And border size is just the border size. So if I go back to my pre-made kung fig, kung, config, um, you'll see that I actually use these. I use these down here in this gap section. And this is where I3 gaps got merged with I3. So I'm going to put these two lines, gaps. So I'll just put them up here, I guess. Doesn't really matter where I put them. So I'm going to put this gaps keyword and I'm going to say inner is inner is equal to the variable inner gap size. And then I'm going to copy this line and I'm just going to change inner to outer. I'm going to say outer gap size. And I'm going to put a comment here just saying um, inner. Actually, I don't think you can do same line comments in the i3 config. But just know outer gap size is equal to inner gap size plus outer gap size. So outer gap size is just what to append to inner gap size when on the outside of all the windows. So now that we have that, I should just be able to super shift R to reload the config. And yeah, now we have window gaps, border gaps, which looks much nicer already. So now uh, the border width, where did I set that? Right here. So I'm just going to copy these because, so I'll leave the link to my pre-made i3 config in the description. So let me copy these in. And so you put this keyword, default underscore border, pixel, border size. So this variable we set, and then you can just copy this line, and between default and border, put an additional floating underscore, so that floating borders also abide by this. So now, if I reload the Kung Fig, yeah, now we have normal-ish looking borders if you're ricing a window manager. And looks pretty good already. So... What else? What else can we do to make this just a little bit nicer before the next tutorial? Right, the bar. So, I'm going to vim the auto starts file. I actually forgot to make this executable, so do a chmod plus x and then the auto starts file to make it executable. And I'm going to put this line here. So under all of this, I'm going to put polybar and then an and symbol. These and symbols just mean asynchronous. So like uh, run these and then run whatever's after it while they're running. Nitrogen dash dash restore doesn't need that though since it's it exits anyways. So, But these programs that stay up and running need these and symbols. So now if I reload the config, yeah, now we have polybar. So polybar looks pretty ugly by default. In the next tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to actually rice it. Um, so yeah. And you can actually see some of the functionality is missing, because in i3, you actually need a special module for uh, the window workspaces. So... That should do it for this tutorial. You've got a basic, a very, very basic, kind of ugly setup going on. So, uh, one thing I will mention is you may want to save this with Git. So, I'm going to go into my i3 config and I'm just going to do git in it.
Okay, so this is, uh, I'm glad it told me this, so I actually want to rename my default branch, so I'm going to name it main. I'm going to remove the .get file in here, s folder, and then do git in it. So git status, so I'm going to add both these files with git add period status, then I'm going to do a git commit, ugly version, but it works. Okay, right, so here's some more things I need to set, so I'm going to set git config dash dash global user dot email <clears throat> and then just my email so I'll set my gmail e email even though I have a two to note email now that I tend to use and also my name so user dot name and I'll just set this to Jackson Novak so did that commit <clears throat> no, it did not. So I'm just going to do a git commit. Did that commit? No, it did not. So let me... Okay. Yeah, so... Now I've got this backed up with git, so if I make any mistakes, I can just do git restore period, and it will restore back to this previous version. So, yeah, that will just about do it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I definitely want to go deeper in this tutorial, so things like ew widgets and making it look really nice. Um, next tutorial, we will look at stuff like the color scheme and maybe PyCom. Although PyCom does behave kind of funny in a virtual machine, so I might move that to bare hardware for the PyCom one. But yeah, um, <clears throat> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, go nuts on your i3 race. I should also cover other window managers in this series as like a branch off, so things like BSPWM and Qtile. So that'll just about do it for this tutorial, guys. Um, have a great day. See you all later. Subscribe, follow me on Odyssey, ring the bell, leave a comment, leave a like, tell me what I can change, make this better. Um, all that good stuff. Share the video. I believe I am at 145 subscribers right now, so let's see how fast we can change that up to 200. So subscribe again. All right. Um, Peace out. See you guys all later.